Our scripture for our scripture for today is taken from the first book of Kings, the 19th chapter, beginning with the ninth verse. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with a sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloth, cloth over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I did not lose my mind, and I did not lose my place. You feel the tension rising in the room? When we said, this is the word of the Lord, and you said your part, and you sat down, what was supposed to happen? Somebody was supposed to start talking. Silence is a source of great strength. What else do we have? Oh, yes, I have often regretted my speech, never my silence. Has anybody else felt that way? <laughs> silence isn't empty. It's full of answers. Silence is the language of God. All else is poor translation. Silence is pure and holy. It draws people together because only those who are comfortable with each other can sit without speaking. Sometimes the sound of silence is the most deafening sound of all. I think that's the last one, isn't it? Is there one more? That's the last one. We are uncomfortable with silence. We fill our days with noise. We get in our vehicles, and what is the first thing that many of us do? Turn the radio on. Why? We've never heard those songs before, right? We don't like silence. It makes us uncomfortable. When I didn't stand up and start talking, I could see some of you looking at each other like, uh, 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 this, this isn't right. Is there a video supposed to be playing? Are they having trouble up there? What, what's going on? When is the last time, the last time that you purposefully sat in silence? If we're not silent, how can we hear God? Because do we believe that God speaks to us? I don't know about you, I believe that God speaks to us. But if God is speaking and I am not listening, do I hear? As a pastor, one of the things that I often got asked when I was leading a church was, how do I know what God's will is for me? 
And the answer is very simple. You ask, and then you listen. You simply listen. But what does listening involve? It involves silence. Another translation of the Scripture that was read this morning doesn't translate it gentle, wh- gentle whisper. It's, it's de- it translates it deafening silence. God was in the silence. He wasn't in the fire. He wasn't in the earthquake. He wasn't in the, in the wind. He wasn't in any of those things. And by the way, that's a pet peeve of mine to call things like that acts of God because God is not in the, in the hurricane and the, the tornado and, and the thunderstorm business. God doesn't need those things to speak to us. More often than not, He speaks to us with a still, small voice. But we have to be able to listen Remember this in Psalm 46? Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. What does he start that with? Be what? Be still. You ever told your kids or grandkids that? Be still. Our grandkids have spent the weekend with us, and uh, I've said that once or twice. Just be still. Be still. Why do we fear silence so much? You know one of the reasons why I think that silence scares us so much? When things are quiet, we get to find out about ourselves. We get to really know what's going on in here and in here. But if the world is noisy, I can distract myself from that. I don't have to know what's going on here. I don't have to know what's going on here. You know, this is one of my favorite scriptures because what has Elijah just done prior to this? Fleeing to the mountains. Here's your Bible study lesson for today. What has he done just prior to this? Remember the contest with the prophets of Baal? Remember that? Okay, take your Bible. It's not a quiz. Take your Bible. Turn to page 1 Kings 19. What's going on prior to this? Elijah has just done something great. He has seen the hand of God in a very real and very powerful way. And then what happens to him? He gets scared. He gets scared. And he flees. And he runs to the mountain because he's afraid. He's afraid that people are going to do something to him. He's afraid that God's not going to be there. He's afraid that he's going to be alone. And he's hiding. What is the thing, what is the question that God asks Elijah when he's in the cave on the mountain? What are you doing here? Now, God is God, right? God is omniscient. He knows all things. He knows what's going on. It's not like God needs Elijah to explain to him what's happening. This is a question that we've all asked people when we know the answer. What are you doing? Does Elijah say anything? Does Elijah do anything? No. He doesn't do anything. And then there's this this wind, and there's this earthquake, and there's this fire, and there's these things that the people who don't know God would say, these are signs of God. No, they're not. No, they're not signs of God. And what does God ask him again at the very end of the Scripture that was read? What are you doing here, Elijah? What are you doing here? What do we learn from this story? What do we learn from all of this? We learn a lot about people. 
How often when we are at the highest of our spiritual life that they, we then forget and we get scared and we want to run away and hide. How often do we forget that God says that he will be with us where and when? Everywhere and always? What do you and I have to be afraid of? Nothing. Nothing. It's amazing when you read the New Testament that people in the New Testament always demand a sign. Jesus feeds the 5,000 with the, a with the few fish and the loaves. And what is the, the very next story? What do the Pharisees ask? If you would just give us a sign. If you would just tell us. How are we supposed to know God's will? How are we supposed to know God's presence? How are we supposed to know God's glory if we don't listen? If we don't prepare our hearts? If we don't prepare our minds? How are we to ever hear God if we're afraid of the silence? I like to refer to myself as a two-by-four Christian. And by that I mean I don't operate on intuitions. God has to hit me upside the head with a two-by-four. Lord, if you want me to do something, you have to make it billboard clear. But that's not God's problem. That's my problem. That's my problem. Some people are able to hear hear the voice of God in the smallest things. Think about one of the great gifts that God's given us. Where do we get to see God? Where do we get to see God? Don't we get to see God in the rain? Don't we get to see God in the, in the face of a child? Don't we get to hear God in the in the small voice that speaks to our soul in the middle of the night. We are never alone, my friends. God is always with us. He is always there. He's always talking. But are we listening?